So yeah, like uh, where Kellen and I come from, you know, Buffalo wings are like, you know, we're like the capital of Buffalo wings. <laughs> so kind of like how New York is like the capital of pizza. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Love California pizza wings. makes me want to cry. <laughs> we're so bad, I know. It's terrible out here. I know. California can be so lame in so many ways. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how did it feel when you were first cast as a co-star on The Secret Us of uh, Alex Mack? Um, originally, when I got the part, it was only like, I think it was supposed to be three episodes. So I was excited. I mean, I, you know, I had gone through an audition process for the show for years before I even got the part uh, originally it was for Alex and then it was for Annie and then they shot a pilot oh, wow. and recast the whole thing. So then I went back for Alex. I went back for Annie and then um, they called my agent and said that they had like written a part just for me. Oh, wow. So when I showed up to do the screen test, there was like 50 other girls there auditioning. And I was like, this part was not written for me. Oh, so I know I that feeling. Through, yeah. So I had to go through the whole thing again for Robin. So yeah, when I booked it, it was supposed to be three episodes. And by the time I was done with the third episode, they offered me like kind of a regular role on the show. That's awesome. That's yeah. Because cool. I know getting a co-star role, especially that's reoccurring on a series is a, an objective a lot of actors strive to achieve. Sure. Yeah. And I, I mean, and I definitely, I mean, it's weird to like think at that time I had already been on like so much stuff, you know, that, um, yeah, but, um, yeah, I was not expecting to be like a series regular on the show at all. I thought it was just going to be three episodes. And then I did most of the, I, I don't know what the final count was, but I think I was in like 60 out of 80 or whatever it is. So, and they were cool. They let me off. You know, I think the reason why I wasn't in some of them too, is I was going off and doing other projects. So they were always really cool. I was doing a movie or this or that, or a different TV show. And they would let me off the episode for the week so I could go do other stuff, which was awesome too. Upon rewatching a lot of the Alex Mack episodes, I immediately saw a young Jessica Alba. Yeah. I did not remember her being in that show, but how, how was she to work with on that? Yeah, and Alex Mack was her first thing she ever booked. So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it was really cool. She was awesome. She we were actually pretty good friends offset too. And um, mm -hmm. I was friends with her brother. And yeah, we would go do things on the weekends. We'd go to like Universal Studios and stuff. <laughs> I haven't talked to that's her awesome. in a very long time, but yeah, yeah, it was she was awesome to work with. Yeah. I love her in idle hands. Oh. Yeah, with Devin Sawa. Yeah. Devin, yeah. Yeah. Super good. Yeah. yeah. I don't idle hands like she's like she's managed to have a hell of a hell of a career well, yeah also with honest with the honest products you know that company she owns and it's all like okay. kind of i think it's like non-toxic pure products or whatever yeah she's definitely she was very smart with is that like makeup or perfume or something it's everything it's like makeup it's um like okay. uh cleaning products it's i think even food i think there's some food stuff so yeah mm. So in 2007, they released a DVD package of Alex Mack and they kind of like gave Jessica Alba a top billing on the package as an effort to like sell more yeah. copies, even though she was only in just a few episodes. But yeah. what were your thoughts on that <laughs> when they did that? <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm used to that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's Hollywood, you know, it's Hollywood for you. Yeah, I noticed they do that in a lot of movies, like somebody who has a small cameo role they just slap their name on it because they're already a big star no no, no. Yeah. they do that in every movie <laughs> in everything every movie. yeah Here's the biggest every... it's gonna be the first one on the bill yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah it's so it is sell. okay we don't really care it, it is what it is <laughs> either way it gets you guys seen even more probably yeah yeah anyway, you know yeah the show really came <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> back to life once they released it on dvd so yeah. So during your time on Alex Mack, did you ever get stopped by fans? Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we were the number one kid show for like five years or something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, there were points where I couldn't, I couldn't really go out anymore because, you know, really? go to the mall and stuff like that. You can't really do stuff like that anymore because, um, yeah, you know, too many people want to stop and, talk to you or take pictures and back then it was like the disposable cameras or like <laughs> the little electronic cameras there's no <clears throat> phone cameras yet so yeah that, that was probably better though because they they couldn't like look at the picture and be like oh that didn't come out good 
Totally. And also there was right. like no PMZ or anything like that. So we were kind of, you know, we had a little yeah. more like leniency with the stuff we could do, but yeah, we got, I mean, I, me personally, I got stopped a lot for a lot of, you know, not just Alex Mack, all mm. these different other things <clears throat> I had been in. So yeah. Do you have any like weird fan interaction stories or have you ever been like stalked or anything weird? Yeah. I had a stalker for a while. Um, <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. He was, yeah, shows. he was mailing in like really kind of scary letters to our uh, fan <laughs> mail department. Um, so they had kind of had to like beef up security. <laughs> a little bit. So this was during Alex Mack, you got the letters? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've had, I've had a lot of like, yes. and then I've also had some fans that have just like still to this day, they're, I mean, they know everything about my career. They mm -hmm. paint pictures and, you know, I don't find any of that stuff weird. I find it like super endearing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, Humble. But definitely a lot of weird interactions over the years, of course, for yeah. sure. Well, I mean, the diehard fans, you know, they're the one that keep, they keep your, you know, your motor running, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, know. they're a huge part of who I am. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I actually have a mural of you above my bed with some candles below it. Amazing. I love it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope you do. I hope they're my candles. I hope it's those candles with my face on it. If not, it just doesn't even make sense, right? <laughs> exactly. You've said uh, Darius Love was one of the funniest people on that set, on camera and behind the scenes. What kind of things would he do to keep the mood light and fun while you guys work together? Did I say that? When did I say that? I'm it's, just kidding. <laughs> it's some interview. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, he was hilarious for sure. I mean, we were young kids when we started the show and we were just like almost on the brink of adulthood when we ended, you know, so we grew up together. So every like antics you can think of like happened on that set, you know, and Darius mm -hmm. was a big like prank player and mm -hmm. he was also like my brother in real life. You know, he took really good care of me offset and yeah. he was older and he was the first to get a car and I would like drag him all around to parties and stuff. And he always like, took very good care of me. And if boys were wow. trying to talk to me, he was like, oh, hell no. He's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Don't talk, you're not, not with my sister, you know? But yeah, he's hilarious. Still to this day, one of the funniest guys ever. His personality is larger than life. Yeah, um, yeah he was really funny. Larissa also did a lot of like pranks and stuff like that. Oh, I mean, yeah. we all did, you know? I was kind of more of the like hipster already, even at yeah. that age, I was just like, thought I was so cool. Yeah. So I, was, like, oh, I don't have time for pranks, you you're know? The but more we <laughs> yeah, but we were a family. I mean, we were all really good friends and we experienced a lot of our firsts together, you know, like, uh -huh. I think, you know, we, I think Larissa smoked her first cigarette with me. I mean, just like <laughs> stuff that happens when you're teenagers, you know, and yeah, so yeah. I actually, I was in Yosemite like a week or two ago and my friend still doesn't know that I did this, but I don't know if you ever heard, there's like this like little prank spray that you can buy. Oh mm -hmm. no. It's literally called liquid ass. <laughs> It, it literally says it right on the bottle, liquid ass. And I basically, I brought it with me because I'm just like, okay, I'll use this on this trip at some point. And I <laughs> sprayed it in our room just to see, oh my God. He was in the bathroom, my one friend. And it just, it reeked. The whole room was destroyed. Oh my God. So he, I didn't, I didn't even tell him I did this. He called the hotel staff and was like, yeah, this is a problem. I think our pipe <laughs> broke or I think. No way. Oh my God. He, thought, he thought it was the toilet water. And he was wow. freaking out and he was like, he's like, yeah, like, I really think we need to get comped. And I think we got like comped for like the night. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. We never did anything as uh, clever as that. Yeah. It was pretty extreme, <laughs> but it was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> So when uh, the show was being filmed, did you live close by to Valencia? No, um, we lived, me and my mom at that time lived in Beverly Hills. So gotcha. it was a little bit of a trek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like about an hour drive yeah, every day. And then I moved to Hollywood, like right off the Sunset Strip, um, like a couple years into the show. That was a little bit closer, but it was all pretty far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's it like living in Beverly Hills? That sounds pretty sweet. It not, it. No, it's like not cool at all. No. Like, really? Yeah, I, we lived in an apartment in Beverly Hills. It's like not that cool. Oh, I see. And I was young. Like, what do I, you know, what did I care at that age? So you and probably, to be honest, I could care less at this age too. It's like Beverly, you know, I think yeah. people hear Beverly Hills and they just assume that it's like this yeah, really yeah. extravagant lifestyle. But, you know, unless you're like a millionaire yeah, or live yeah. in a house in Beverly Hills, none of it matters. It's What's all, the point? Yeah. Yeah. Just more traffic yeah exactly so you might not even know about this but um did anyone at the time say that alex mack was copying toxic avenger never heard that so there's this movie uh there's this there's this company out in uh, new jersey called <laughs> trauma and like legit like this they're, they're called trauma 
like the company's called Trauma, and they made this movie called Toxic Avenger, which is easily their most popular movie. Okay. And it's basically about this like guy that falls into like toxic waste and becomes like a superhero. <laughs> so it's like oh, it's and it very... came out before Alex Mack. Yeah, it came out. What what year was that? Like 80, 84. 84. Oh. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, I just thought it was hilariously similar, but. Yeah, like uh, trauma actually started the careers for a lot of very uh, well-known established actors. They they kicked off the career of uh, Paul Walker, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I've never heard that, but I do hear all the time that there's like so many shows currently on. Like, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think Stranger Things would probably be the best oh, kind yeah. of example. And one of our producers from Alex Mack is actually the creator of Stranger Things. So it kind of makes you think like, hmm. Oh, Sean, Sean Levy? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Sean Levy. My, Sean Levy worked with uh, friends of mine when he was just starting out in a movie called Zombie Nightmare. And he played like okay. this, he played like this heavy metal punk kid who's, oh, you know, a del- who, he was an actor in it. And he was oh, like, cool. a delin- he was like a delinquent. It starred Tia Carreri and uh, Adam West and Tia Carreri was just starting out her career at the time. Wow. Too. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I think Alex Mack definitely, it was the first other than Toxic Avenger, but like for kids, so to speak, you know, it was definitely the first of its kind. And I think paved the way for a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of the content you see today with, Mm -hmm. you know, the Nickelodeon shows, even some of the other shows too. Um, Yeah. But let's be honest, Nickelodeon is nowhere near as good as it once was. No, 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 no. It's a whole different, like, I think it's just, yeah, there's just, it's too much. It's yeah. too much stuff. I it's just, if you were like a kid, like, I mean, I grew up in like, I was a 90s kid. So I ex- yeah, got to experience, too. I got to experience that era of Nickelodeon. It's just, you can't relive that or replicate no, it. It, it was, was such a great decade. It Alex was, Mack was a little before me. I kind of came in with like the Amanda show and all that. That's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. All that in us. So we were a little bit before all that. And then all that came, I think like a year later. So on the SNCC lineup, it was like, are you mm-hmm. afraid of the dark? Oh, yeah. S- something else I'm forgetting. And then like- Ian and Kel, Mack. all those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Alex Mack and all that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you ever so watch it- any of those like old game shows like Double Dare or like Figure It Out? <laughs> no, um, but I became um, friendly with Phil Moore. Um, he was- um, Is he one of like the show? hosts or he something? He hosted um, a really popular- legends of the hidden temple no i'm gonna look it up right now because it's gonna drive me nuts he God. it was like legendary nickelodeon philip moore hold on let's see um sounds familiar so i probably do know yeah i'm sorry hold on oh take no, worry. no worries no take your I'm time excited to hear what this is, this is literally <laughs> gonna drive me bananas if i yeah. don't yeah um uh, nick arcade oh okay 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 yeah nick arcade very cool so yeah yeah all, yeah, all those shows were so great. But yeah, I never, I wasn't like a big Nickelodeon person before I was on Nickelodeon. I probably mm. was like more of a Nickelodeon person afterwards. But like, mm. I definitely watched um, Salute Your Shorts, shout out yeah. to oh, my yeah. Bauer, good friend of mine. And yeah, I, watched- I actually, I know a couple of people that are friends with him. You, yeah. you're friends with him. And then what? my friend <laughs> Brendan's friends with him. Like they're like really- Oh, I know cool. Brendan. The guy for what movie? Yeah. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, I uh, during quarantine, like when That's things fine. were a little bit more open, I went with my friend Aaron Schwartz, and we went to go. Who you guys probably know from Heavyweights. Heavyweights, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we went to go see Michael because you know we hadn't seen him in forever, and yeah, Michael yeah. had brought Brendan, and Brendan did this like <laughs> big <interview>. film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did an interview of us. Or something he never puts down his me. camera. And then Ryan Grassmeyer <laughs> was there too. He's on Henry Danger which is currently on Nickelodeon. Oh, that new one. It was kind of like a big Nickelodeon reunion. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I love uh, Michael Bauer in that horror movie, The Willies. I don't know if you ever saw that. Never seen it. I got to watch it. That's another like 90s. Yeah. Even Sean Astin's in that. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, I got to check that out. Yeah. Cheese. So, like, I mean, it's obviously, it's no, um, it's no strain. It's not uh, news to anyone that Nickelodeon played a huge part in, the nineties, especially for kids of that generation, like myself. So do you ever look back and see like how influential Alex Mack was in that era? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I realized how, I don't even think I realized how big of a show it was until honestly, until kind of like the last five years, just seeing how many fans are like even still watching it to this day or having their kids watch it now, or Mm -hmm. just begging us for a reboot or, Mm -hmm. whatever it is at that time 
you know, when, when the first season came out, we knew like we had something, but it got so big so quick that I think it's kind of like hard to be like, realize that in the moment, like when you're living it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't realize back then, but now I realize how, yes, like I realize how influential the show was on so many people's lives. And I feel really honored to be part of like pop culture in that way, you know? Mm -hmm. As ridiculous and hilarious as the effects of the show look now, were they pretty groundbreaking at the time? Yeah, he, super groundbreaking. I don't even think Nickelodeon had ever done anything like that. So like when Alex Smack melts down into the puddle or the constant like levitating effects, like that was all pretty crazy then? Yeah, it was super crazy. And Tommy Lynch, the creator of the show, actually tells a really cool story of like how that even came about. We did another podcast a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I'll send you guys a link when it's out. And he tells the story of that where I think he went and like spoke to, it, it kind of um, was inspired by Terminator and I think he like went to James Cameron and asked like, how the heck do I do this for a Nickelodeon show? And That's so it funny. was this like crazy expensive thing that yeah. like was going to cost more than the entire first season put together. So he had to figure out a different way to do it. So like, yeah. you know, so yeah, but it was groundbreaking at that time. I mean, yeah, people were like shook over that. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, well, because that's like when CGI was really starting to become more yeah. heavily yeah. used. Yeah, so, yeah, for a kid to like melt into a puddle and be able to go under doors and this and that. The zapping, you know, that's kind of, you know, that was already like out there. Mm. But the morphing, I think that's what they called it, right? Morphing into morphing, the liquid. Yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah. Because I always CGI is the best. I love it. it yeah. It's, it's funny you had mentioned uh, Terminator because every time I like every time I watched the Alex Max show and I was introduced to Terminator as a kid, I was like, wait a minute. I wonder if there's a connection between the two. Yeah, so, there, yeah. there is. <laughs> yeah. And so, there was. so did they just use like fishing line for most of like the levitating things or? Yeah, I mean, our prop department was so, um, you know, and, and our stunt department too was so good with that kind of stuff. But yeah, a lot of it was just plastic wires, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Did they break a lot of stuff while, while doing that? I'm sure. I think so. I wasn't even yeah. really in a lot of the scenes where, she yeah. was doing her powers because yeah. I think my my character was actually the only one to never fully find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So how was like kept Robin in the dark? <laughs> yeah. How was like the initial reception when it like first boomed down to like TV though? I don't remember. I have no idea. Yeah. I was like not. You know, I it wasn't a generation where like the show came out and I could hop on Instagram and see That's what so people true. were saying about it. I just. You know, I knew the ratings were good and I knew by second season we had become the number yeah. one kid show in the entire world. Yeah. But like aside from that, and I knew that it was getting harder for me to like leave my house and just go do normal things with my friends. You know, mm -hmm. I knew that we had a huge show on our hand, mm -hmm. um, but I, I didn't really, I don't think I, I don't, like I said, until recently, I don't even think I realized how big this show was, you know? So your memories are pretty foggy at this point then of like anything that really happened on set? No, on set, like, I remember most Very of that. Nice. I just, I don't, like, as far as what the, the world's kind of perception was of mm -hmm. the show yeah, and tough. the effect it was, I don't know, because we didn't mm -hmm. have as much access to that kind of stuff back then as we do now. Do you have any funny memories from the shoot? Like, um, Yeah, I mean, I spent so many years of my life on this show growing up. It was, mm -hmm. like, the most formative years of my life, you know, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, I mean, there was a ton of stuff always going on. There was always like, you know, um, we were dealing with like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, aside from the pranks, we were dealing with real life stuff outside of the show. And like, while we were filming, all we had was each other, you know? So mm -hmm. we were dealing with like teenage stuff yeah, together yeah. on the show. And um, yeah, so lots of, lots of memories of that for sure. So, so like you said, you guys all would hang out on the weekends typically then yeah, off of filming. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Alexis Fields was like spending the night at my house almost every weekend. Same with Larissa. Larissa and I went to our first concert together. It was Real Big Fish. and Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she, you know, she would spend the night all the time. Darius and I were going to like a ton of different parties together yeah. all the time. So yeah, we were, we were really close. We really were. Do you still like ska music? 
uh, not as much as I did when I was a teenager, but I, yeah. you know, if I put on that real big fish album, I, I still know every single word, every lyric. And I loved Save Ferris and, um, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So the show had ended obviously due to Larissa wanting to move on. So how were you informed that the show was coming to an end? And also how did it feel that it was coming down to the wire? It must've been like the end of an era. Yeah, I mean, I think we knew it was coming because, mm -hmm. you know, she really wanted to um, have like a college experience, mm -hmm. which we all understood, you know, that wasn't necessarily like what I wanted or I'm sure a lot of the other cast members and crew, but it was totally understandable. I think they, I think from what I remember, they just kind of sat us down as a, like a little mini family mm -hmm. and said, you know, this is it. This is going to be the last season, blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah, so we knew mm -hmm. in our last season what we were going into. And um, I had actually booked a different show. And um, and it, so I, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to be in the last season. Mm -hmm. And then something kind of at the last minute got like all twisted mm -hmm. around. So um, we changed it so I could finish out Alex Mack with everybody. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So so you kept in touch, obviously, with Darius and Larissa mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah, I talked to Larissa. We text a lot. And, um, cool. you know, I hadn't seen her in a really long time before we had done that reunion. And then even over quarantine, I like kind of put together a reunion over Zoom. And I mm -hmm. we edited just like a little piece of it. We were trying to raise some money for like Music Cares or Screen Actors Guild Actors Relief Fund for, yeah. you know, artists that were struggling during the pandemic. Um, and, and then, yeah, we, we keep in touch over social media and we text a lot. And then Darius and Jason Strickland, I see all the time. Mm -hmm. um, two That's of my, so my best friends. And um, I talk to Tommy Lynch often. And um, yeah, unfortunately, John Nielsen just passed away, which is really oh, sad. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really sad. But, you know, I was I was keeping in contact with him as well and seeing him, we, we were going for coffee. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, I actually keep in touch with more of the cast than people would probably realize. That's crazy. My That's like 27 years now, right? Yeah. yeah. 94. Yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend is actually friends with Jason, believe it or not. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. What a small world. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's amazing. I was just with him and Darius last week, actually. Yeah, no, he seems like a he seems like a wonderful guy. Like really my, is. my girlfriend has said a, a lot of good things about him. He's a great very, guy. She says she he's a very hard worker too. He's a hard worker, very talented director. He's a man of God. He's a great guy. His wife is amazing. Um, yeah, I feel very blessed to have him in my life still after all these years. We do a lot of a lot of stuff together, a lot of podcasts, a lot of promo. Um, so yeah, we're very close, me and Jason. Are you able to go back and rewatch yourself in the show or any of your films for that matter? I, I, um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes uh, with streaming now, mm -hmm. it's funny because, you know, I, I get texts or whatever all the time, like, Oh my God, I'm watching you on this or that. So there has been some stuff that I hadn't seen in forever. Yeah. Like an episode of Baywatch I did that I was able to like, go watch on Hulu <laughs> or whatever, or Boy Meets World or ER. As far as like Alex Mack goes, I haven't gone back and rewatched the whole show. I don't even know mm. if I've seen every episode to be honest, but you know, there's a lot, tons of different fan accounts that will like yeah. splice together these little edits of us mm. or post Montage. scenes. Yeah, so I see it that way. And, um, but no, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't gone back and rewatched the show. You were in an episode, an early episode of the TV show ER. Uh, I haven't gotten to see you in that, but I heard your character was plotting to kill your mother in the show. Why is that? Uh, she tried to kill her mother. She yeah. pushed her off a ladder. That's I don't crazy. know. Wow. Maybe she, <laughs> I have no idea why she wanted to do that. <laughs> what year was that? Was that like later? Um, that was like the second season of ER. So I don't know. I was, I was like well down. into Alex Max. I must have been like 14 or 15. I don't know what year. Oh, okay. Maybe 97, 97. I wonder if I can find yeah. that one. I want to see that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's on It's on um, Hulu, I guess, or whatever. Oh, it's, cool. It's on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can oh, watch Oh, I'm it. watching that tonight. <laughs> yeah, you just have to find like the, I can tell you that I think it's called um, Long Day's Journey. Long Day's Journey. Okay. Yeah, it's like season two, episode four. I don't know. You'll yeah, see. I, got, I got IMDb. I can, I'm sure I can. Yeah, just like, you can yeah. find it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Hell yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you were in the first remake of Freaky Friday, the TV, the TV movie uh, mm-hmm. that starred Gabby Hoffman. Were you familiar yeah. with Gabby's work prior to filming? Because I know she was big for like Uncle Buck and a couple of other movies. Yeah, um, kind of. Not really. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think at that age, I didn't really realize like I, I was so unfazed by all of that kind of stuff that I never really like knew like, oh, I'm working with this person, like, not, yeah. you know, it just, not a lot of it was, like, phasing me, which I think is good, which I think, oh, that's a great helped, thing, yeah, would help me stay, like, Humble. very authentic to who I was, good, bad, or indifferent, you know, at yeah. that time in the industry, but I loved Gabby, her and I became really close after that movie, um, so, yeah, I think I was, like, more aware of who Shelley Long was than <laughs> Gabby, yeah. Yeah, no, because I, I remember they play like, right, especially around the time it came out and then they would rerun that movie like every now and then. I oh, think the yeah. first time, because I think the first time I ever saw that was probably, I was a little kid, but I think I was like, it was like either 95 or 96 when I first saw it. So, because they used to rerun it every now and then. Yeah. 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 So, well, doing that movie is actually what got me the Babysitter's Club because it's the same director and Marla, who's still a dear friend of mine and she was my best friend growing up. Her and I did Freaky Friday together. And I remember like when we were getting close to wrapping, the director was like, I'm doing this movie. It's, you know, about the Babysitter's Club books. And we were like, what? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean- by Scholastic. Yes, because I loved those books. I read all of them. And she was like, you're definitely going to have a part in it, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, told that to me and Marla. And she kind of, she held true to that. And, you know, she put me and Marla in that movie too. So- yeah, that movie definitely was a springboard for. No, that's awesome. Of, See, yeah. I was going to ask that. I, I was curious because I thought Alex Mack was the reason you did Babysitter's Club, just because of the fact that Larissa's in that, too. No. So, I mean, uh, again, funny story. When I was told I was going to be in Babysitter's Club, I was mm. supposed to play the part Larissa played. Oh, wow. Um, OK. Yeah. And so then they ended up deciding on Larissa um, and you know, basically told me like, and at that time too, I think I was developing like a little bit of an edge and, you know, so they were like, no, you're better suited to be a bad girl. I was like, okay. I mean, you're hilarious in that though. So it definitely worked. Yeah. Bad girl with like a heart of gold. Really? So I was, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm great. I'm glad I played the part that I played. I think, you know. Yeah. So did you ever see the original Freaky Friday before you worked on uh, the remake? You never did? No. No. What are your thoughts on the Lindsay Lohan one with Jamie Lee Curtis? Never saw it. Oh, you never saw that one? Really? No, oh, I like that one. Yeah. Um, so don't take this the wrong way, but genuinely curious, what are some of the challenge challenges you faced as a redhead in film and television? Yeah, that's a great question. I do not yeah. take it personally. Yeah. Um because um <laughs> it's being a, a redhead is like an interesting thing to be in life you know and I think that I like yeah. tried to avoid it so often like the second I was off the show I dyed my hair a different color and I cut it all off and I was like super like kind of goth and I mean I was goth on the show too I guess Robin was kind of <laughs> rock and goth yeah. in her own way but yeah, yeah I, I feel like kind of my whole life I've always tried to run away from like being a redhead but at that age I mean if you see my progression on the on Alex Mack even like my first season mm-hmm. I was very awkward looking I had yeah you know very long red like orange hair orange <laughs> not even just red orange right orange. and like I was super pale and I had these like big bushy eyebrows and like no kind of sense of who I was as a woman or even a young girl or anything yeah. like that and then you know it, I think I think almost like in the second season, like I make a huge kind of turnaround, you know, from what it was to, and then towards, you know, the, the final season, I kind of like settled into um, what it meant to be a redhead at that time. But yeah, Yeah. it's tough. You get made fun of a lot. Um, Really? Yeah. I was bullied a lot in school. I think with redheads, you're either like, really pretty or you're really ugly and I don't think there's like That's any bullshit. in between with with you know redheads you know and I think in my earlier year not ugly I shouldn't mm-hmm. say that that's not a nice thing to say but yeah you know um <laughs> in my earlier years I was not really pretty so it was kind of like really? you know yeah I don't think so I think I was really awkward uh, looking and like you know pre-pubescent and um <laughs> just you know 
it's a lot. It's, it's a lot, especially that. I mean, even to this day, I diet a little bit darker, you know? Um, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's fucking weird to be red. <laughs> it's weird. It's a weird thing. And how long um, does your, your hair last if you dye it? Like if you dyed it black, how long would it take for the orange to come back? Well, if you dye your hair, I have dyed it black before. If you dye your hair black, yeah. all that grows is the root. So yeah, however, imagine right. how long does it take for a root to grow all the way down your head? That could be a while. Yeah. Five years. Five you years know? So you'd have to strip uh, the color out. I mean, I've had every hair color in the book, blonde, black, brown, red really? different shit no i've never done like the color like those kind of colors <laughs> i've had every shade of red um yeah. you know so so yeah <laughs> that's crazy yeah um, one of my old roommates was an extra in that movie dolomite that like eddie murphy one that he did on netflix a couple years ago he was the only ginger in the entire movie yeah yeah he, I mean, he literally, he sticks out. Redheads are time. rare, man. They're rare. It's just funny when it's just as an extra, though, just to, like, see him just pop up. It's like you spot you know him. You like, know, it's him. Hundred. Yeah. yeah. He was but just like. my friend. Was, yeah. He was yeah. not hard to miss at all. Like, yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, curious, where do you know Devin, Devin Whitehead from? So, Devin Whitehead, that's how you and I connected, I think, right? Pretty much, yeah. 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 So, he, um. He is one of those like super fans of Alex Mack, like super <laughs> uber uber I fans. I figured like, that. Like, will send me pictures of him outside of a location. Like, hey, look, <laughs> I'm standing on Robin Russo's doorstep, and I'm like, what? Like, I would never be able to find that in Valencia. And he, I mean, he knows everything about the show there is to know. So when we did the reunion, um, yeah, at Universal Studios, he came. And I think that's when I realized like what a big fan he was and stuff. And we just yeah. connected. He was such a sweet guy and mm -hmm. we really wanted to make him feel like part of the family. And then when, um, yeah, then when, when we were splicing together the reunion, I had reached out to him because I saw some of his artwork. He showed me something. He made like a poster for Amazing. I think a Salute Your Shorts reunion. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, do you want to do Alex Mack? And he was like, oh my God, I'd be so honored. So he did. So that like kind of cartoony thing that you see that I've posted a bunch and reposted. So that's him. Okay. I didn't know that. That's Devin. Yeah. And, oh, and, and he killed it. It's I have it framed in my house, actually. It's so yeah. cool. And um, and then, you know, um, before quarantine and stuff, me and Darius and Jason were doing a lot of promo just because of the reunion. Mm -hmm. And we invited him out to a few things and he's just a really great guy. And when I did my candle line, um, he let me use the artwork for one of the candles. So oh, that's yeah, definitely. he's awesome. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. For anybody that doesn't know, he does cavity colors, which is like that Atlanta based horror merch company. He's just, he kills it. He's so, so talented. So if, De talented. if Devin hasn't yet, he should release, he should make some Alex Max shirts. I think people, I think those would be a yeah, phenomenal I think thing. You got the rights, you probably get the rights, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think because the poster is a likeness of the characters, I think he could probably, get away I think it. he'd be fine. Yeah. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Actually, I saw him, I saw him at a screening. I think it was Natural Born Killers a couple of years or like a year ago. Oh, that's and, like one of my favorite movies of all time. Phenomenal. Oh, dude, then I have a great story for you. Oh, my God. So before <laughs> I, Okay, I'll tell the Devin part first. So the Devin thing, I just saw him after the screening when we were leaving. Um, and I just realized I never knew he's like a super celebrity autograph hound. Like, he's, yeah. really, he's really good at it, too. Like, he, like, showed me all of his, like, Star Wars autographs he's gotten over the years. He's, got, he's like, gotten everything from Alex Mack, too. He'll, I, I gave him my cell phone number because I, I just love the guy so much, you know. Oh, so yeah. he'll text me, like, like oh I, and he gets like guest stars yeah he has like every sorry to cut you off he has like every autograph from um alex mack ever oh that's amazing that's yeah. awesome yeah no he uh so yeah I, I saw him there and that just that blew me away but the funny part of that story is we, we go into oh, like no. to go to the screening me and this one friend of mine um Another old roommate of mine, actually, he was on American Idol and he was kind of oh, like, nice. he was kind of like the laughing stock of American Idol that year. And he went super viral. I'll have to send you the video. It's hilarious. What's his name? Uh, Ethan, but he goes by Vogue Hills. Oh, I think I might know who you're talking about, but send me the video. The Katy Perry one. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but anyways, we just went to see Natural Born Killers at the Egyptian. It was just like an anniversary screening and they had the actors there. They had Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis. Cool. 
And so we're just sitting in our seats waiting for this thing to start. And we saw like over to the left that, you know, they're coming in basically in that hallway over there. Yeah. And, you know, I just see like that, that little like security tape or whatever. And I'm just like, let's just go. And yeah. we, we literally snuck under it and went over to where, where they were in the hallway and went right up to Woody Harrelson and talked to him for a few minutes and then met wow. Juliette Lewis. It was crazy. That's but yeah, amazing. But yeah. Then this, this old lady came up to uh, Ethan and was like, it's like, what are you two doing back here? Like, who are you? And he's like, it's okay. We're with American Idol. And he showed, he showed her his laminate. Oh, how funny. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then like literally let us stay. That's amazing. What a cool story. Yeah, it was, it was bizarre. That's funny. Uh, what's the first tattoo you ever got? Um, oh my God, there's like so many now. Um, the first yeah. tattoo I ever got was this like a tramp stamp butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And in one of the wings... I, in one of the wings, like you'd never know unless I told you, but in one of the wings that like comes down from the bottom, I put like a little B on there for my first boyfriend. His name was <laughs> pretty old. He was on um, Saved by the Bell, the new class. And um, we oh, had like okay. already broken up, I think. And I don't know why the fuck I put it on there. So why we, was it a B though? <laughs> for his name, Ben. Oh, Ben. Oh, yeah. Okay. You'd never know unless I told you. And it's like, it's so old and faded now. You can't even like tell what it is, but. Do tramp stamps hurt? Cause they're in like that. They all hurt. Every single tattoo, anywhere you get it hurts. I don't care what anybody says. But that's kind of close to like your tailbone, isn't it? Tramp yeah. Stamp? It's like on the bone. Yeah. It all hurts. Bone, uh, non-bone. It, it all hurts. And that goes right into my next question. What's the most painful tattoo you've gotten? Honestly, the most painful one is just this little one on my finger. Get out. That was, and I have a sleeve. Like that was the worst one. Yeah. The finger was that bad. Feels like someone's slicing into your bone. It's so bad. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So like, okay, you, you go ahead. So like, uh, cause I know like, especially with tattoos, you know, especially for actors, you know, they try to say, oh, you can't have tattoos for this role or anything like that. Would you feel that that's, you know, had any like effect on getting future roles? Cause I, oh, I have, I cause I have a couple of friends that, tattoos and then they say yeah they're they're not letting me do this movie because i have this and my artist won't uh sign a sign off like you know like the release form to like use the artwork oh really that's i've never heard that yeah i mean there's so much makeup these days you can cover anything you know like covering tattoos is super easy i started getting tattoos in a decade where i was pretty sure i would never want to act ever again so to me i was like fuck it it doesn't matter i'm just gonna like yeah. express myself artistically with tattoos and this and that. And now I think as I'm like, you know, really like heavily considering making my comeback, Come back, yeah. you know, <laughs> when I think about like the tattoos and stuff, I don't think it matters. I think it opens me up to more kind of alternative edgy roles. And I think mm -hmm. that it's very easy to cover up. They have incredible makeup. It takes like five seconds to just cover it all up. Yeah. Look what they did true. with like MGK. Didn't they do that with him in like the dirt or something? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had to like cover up most of his body to at least make him pass for Tommy Bieber. Lee in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, Justin Bieber too on that music video he did. Yeah, yeah it's they... super easy to do. Yeah. yeah, just time consuming. I think is like the probably, only thing. probably yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, if you're the if you're one of the principals, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they're gonna be doing hours on you anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, do you got any like favorite LA food spots? I have a ton of favorite LA food spots. Ooh, I'm like, I love food probably more than I should. Me too. Um, there's, I mean, I live in the San Fernando Valley. So there is, yeah. as you do too. I mean, there's a, mm -hmm. there's great stuff in Burbank too, but um, in Sherman Oaks, there's so many good restaurants. Um, like my favorite sushi restaurant is Shiki Sushi. We go there all the time. Okay. Um, there's this, I'm going to butcher the name. It's like, is a, is a Yaki or whatever. <laughs> is yaki? It's really good ramen. There's Jinya ramen, which I love. Oh, okay. um, there's um, a little Italian place right by my house called Antonio's, which I love. Yeah, there's okay. tons. And then there's, um, I mean, uh, Pache on Laurel Canyon is my favorite restaurant in all of Los Angeles. There's a ton of stuff on the West side that's so good. There's um, mm -hmm. this little place, I think it's like, I guess maybe branded like Little Tokyo or whatever that just this mm -hmm. little dumpling place. Yeah, there's places everywhere. I so mean, there's many. so yeah. many good restaurants in LA, yeah. Do you ever go to Versailles, that Cuban yeah. place? Yeah, yeah, that place is great good. too. Yeah, yeah. Boston, I like Bossa Nova too for like that kind of, you know, um, yeah. 
food. Yeah, but Versailles is really good. There's one, like, I think it's on Culver Boulevard or like right a little before Venice. Yeah, that place is great. Oh, super cool. Yeah. So in the mid 90s, you also did a movie called Babysitter's Club. I did. Which didn't have the opening at the box office that you guys had hoped for at the time, but it, it grew to have a pretty good reception amongst fans and critics. Uh, how cool was it being in a movie with the classic Columbia Pictures logo at the beginning? Yeah, that was cool. That was at that time the biggest movie I'd ever been. I yeah. think probably, period, actually. So it was really cool, you know, just, um, you cool. know, all the premieres and, um, even just going to the movie theater kind of sneaking in with my friends and like sitting in the back just watching it yeah it was yeah. awesome I mean that was a that was a big deal for us our soundtrack was so cool we had the cranberries and better than Ezra mm -hmm. letters to Cleo all of these like amazing 90s bands and you know it's just like a group of of young actors that were really like on mm -hmm. the brink of something really cool and mm -hmm. um for some of them, it was their first movie even. And so, yeah, that was awesome. That was a great experience. Rest in peace, Dolores of the Cranberries. Yeah, yes. Oh, she's so good. Yeah. Um, I loved that little horse jockey outfit that they put you in. Yeah, that was weird. That was like a weird little get up, that whole, yeah. like, you know, can I try on your riding pants thing. That was, <laughs> that was like, I think, one of my first days of filming too. And I had already had like a major crush on Austin O'Brien. Uh -huh. and um and he we actually started dating he was my first like real boyfriend ever so we started dating on that movie set so I just remember like being kind of self-conscious about like every mm -hmm. wardrobe outfit I had yeah. on because I was like oh my god is he gonna think I'm pretty or whatever you know <laughs> um so the riding pants was like I mean what I wouldn't do right now to like be able yeah. to fit into that outfit again I would wear it every day of my life mm -hmm. if it means I could like fit into it again you know yeah. That whole movie is like a total riot, though, because it's like a it's like a definite 90s, you know, like time capsule with the outfits, so soundtrack, the settings, everything. Um, so 90s. Yeah. And it's iconic, you know, and there's this one picture of me and Marla and the other girl's name is Ashley, like the three bad girls. There's just this like iconic picture that gets used mm -hmm. everywhere of the three of us kind of stacked behind yeah. each other. And I just have like the bitchiest look on my face. And so does Marla. And mm -hmm. that's, you know. <clears throat> so yeah it was just a great great experience for sure i came to the conclusion upon finishing the movie that i really need to get myself some overalls <laughs> yeah there's a lot of overalls in that movie. <laughs> there's a lot <laughs> yeah yeah i still wear overalls i love overalls they're the um, best ellen bernston from the exorcist was in it were you yeah. able to meet or talk with her much yeah i mean a little yeah. bit you, uh, on that set because there were so many kids the kids i think really stuck together more so and the adults oh, yeah. stuck together yeah Probably but yeah she was, was very nice person for sure did you ever see her in requiem for a dream yeah of course that movie's wild one of my favorite movies ever yeah i saw that for the first time in the past year it was yeah in my mind yeah it's amazing so shadow zone in between yeah. playing with my rescue heroes and eating play-doh i was watching this little movie growing up okay this is undoubtedly the main thing i know you from i've had the vhs tape since before i can remember and uh if i had to guess you guys must have had a super limited shooting schedule on that one right yeah um that okay. so tom lynch the creator of alex mack that was his movie as well oh, <clears throat> so I know that. yeah so um another one of those kind of examples where they gave me time off of alex mack to go to this movie so tommy just literally called my mom one night and he was like I just got greenlit for yeah. this movie. We want Natanya. Can you guys fly to Canada in two days? And we're like, sure. Okay. So we flew to Canada. We were there for like, I think six weeks. Um, all night shoots, really crazy. Okay. Um, yeah. Where but in I, Canada was it? It was Toronto. Oh, okay. That's not yeah. far from home. That's yeah. Cool. So yeah, that was, I loved doing that movie. How cool was it to get to work with uh, Sean C. Leopardi after his success in like Lan the Sandlot and Casper and stuff? Yeah, again, Casper, he was in Casper? I think so. Casper? Was, I think he was like, was he like one of the kids in the beginning oh, breaking the into kids. the house? Yeah, I think you're right. He was like the again, bully or something. Again, I you know, I was so like, I, I didn't even realize, you know, yeah. I didn't even realize how iconic Sandlot was until like years later because I was pretty good friends with Pat Renna growing up. and. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, you know, I really didn't even like, 
realize but yeah i loved chauncey yeah. we were like mm-hmm. we kind of had a thing going on like oh, of course <laughs> yeah during that movie so it was fun you know you put like a couple teenagers together in canada doing all night shoots and yeah. everyone has their own hotel the moms have their own hotel room the kids have their own hotel room That's so funny. you know yeah shit gets gets a little crazy for sure but yeah <laughs> i loved doing that movie with him we had a lot of fun doing that yeah. mm-hmm. What did they use for the uh, the tentacles that came out of the the wall to like all uh, that? Literally just fake looking tentacles. I don't was... even think there was any CGI on that. Well, there. no, like I don't know if like I don't know if it was like somebody's hands, like, like oh yeah, it was someone's that. hands. Oh, was yeah. somebody doing that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, that was really cool. Yeah, for some reason I always thought that was like New York City. I didn't realize that was Canada. I think it was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It was probably, probably, oh i see what you mean yeah no a lot of a lot of shoots happen in like canada i guess it's like cheaper to shoot out there or something it is yeah. no a lot of movies that they said that they try to take place in new york city they'd always film it in like canada because it could pass for new york city that's right yeah. yeah speaking of good food toronto's not bad with the food scene I, again i have no memory. yeah you wouldn't remember that yeah Pretty good <laughs> I, yeah yeah, yeah. So uh, tell us about the late Ron Silver. He seemed like such a phenomenal antagonist on screen, you know, previously with what he did with uh, Van Damme and uh, Time Cop. So how was he off camera? He was a nice guy too. Again, one of those situations where like the kids kind of stuck together. And, you know, I think that movie was more like adult heavy than it, I think it was just me and Chauncey and Tony Johnson were yeah. like really the only kids in that movie. Mm-hmm. So we just kind of stuck together and the adults stuck together. But yeah, he was really nice very like a consummate professional to work with mm-hmm. just a really sweet person yeah that movie's got this really grim feeling to it when you watch it something about it i don't know yeah it's yeah it's just it's just very well done yeah um, do you. people still recognize you for that one or is that tough i mean sometimes i mean yeah. i think like the real ride or dies like they yeah. know that movie and they're like <laughs> like you you know and you're yeah. like i love that movie um, but yeah, I mean, it's more so Al. It's always Alex Mack. Always, always Alex Mack. Or Babysitter's Club or Boy, Boy Meets World is a big one too. Yeah, mm-hmm. they I get recognized from Boy Meets World a lot. Did you watch any horror in like pre-production to get into the zone? No pun intended. No. Okay. <laughs> no. I know. I was like, yeah, I just kind of always showed up and like did my thing. You know, yeah. I've, I've been like very autonomous my entire life and I've just yeah. kind of always made everything my own. Because I thing. wanted to have like a very specific stamp. Like, you know, I think when, when, what I want when people think of like Natanya yeah. is I want people to think of me as like very unique and original. And I think a lot mm-hmm. of times I wouldn't kind of like give myself any preconceived notions about what horror is supposed to be or what science yeah. fiction is supposed to be or, or whatever, you know, just so I can show up and kind of make something my own. Because regardless of like any, scary movies or horror movies I could have watched before shooting that movie this movie is its own thing so we kind of got to make it whatever we wanted to yeah you didn't want to replicate anything yeah that's smart though I like the way you look at it yeah um what was different about shooting in the 90s as opposed to today well I don't I don't don't do much today yeah but today I I have a whole different life and I do a lot of different things I'm looking towards um you know I've re-signed with an agent so I'm kind of nice. like gearing myself back up for that whole process. I do a lot yeah. of photo shoots, obviously. Like I do yeah, a lot modeling. of, yeah, modeling stuff. But um, but shooting in the '90s, I can only. I mean, the '90s were just such a special decade. You know, I just yeah. don't think anything can like touch it. I think everything's so saturated now, and like, oh, you know, time. it. Yeah, it's just like been washed too many times in the washer. And but I don't. I mean, I I don't know. I don't. I can't really mm-hmm. speak too much to that. Mm-hmm. You were also hilarious as the love interest in Munchie Strikes Back. Oh my god! Nineties cheese for anyone that hasn't <laughs> seen it. I, uh, this is another person you probably won't know, but I love that Angus Scrim from the seventies horror film Phantasm is briefly in the beginning. He's like the old guy that like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What do you, okay. I don't know what you call his character, he was, but he, he was a horror icon. 
Okay, them. cool. He sends Munchie back to Earth. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. That was that movie's hilarious. They did like three of those, I think. Um, so like in one of them, I'm the love interest, and another one, like Jennifer Love Hughes, the love interest. I think there's three of them. Is there three? I thought there was two. I don't know. I, I don't have, know. I've if seen there's the three, that, if there's three, that's one too many for sure. I mean, that movie <laughs> is just so cheesy and yeah, so ridiculous. It's like Gremlins or like Ghoulies. Like all, I think of all those movies together because they're so similar with like any the like. And stuff. And any of those films that had those like, Go ahead. i'm sorry to cut you off i was just gonna say it's just like a little extra street cred to say that you're in a roger corman movie but like oh yeah other than that the thing was fucking ridiculous you know yeah <laughs> were they so, would they mess with people on set with that thing kind really? of i mean yeah. yeah the whole movie was so dumb <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's just cheesy but it's yeah it's, it's a good time cheesy. yeah it's pretty yeah. bad but that's just the kind a- of movie that's like fucking perfect in an audience setting though totally and it's also again like something cool to have on my resume that i'm like oh, yeah. you know Big time. Yeah. yeah i have Anything. like a, a lot of really good stuff and then also like a lot of really bad cheesy stuff yeah so no you're me. great in it though i mean thank I mean, you're, you just like everything Oh, uh, thanks. what made you step away from acting initially? I mean, you kind of already touched on that, but yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think, you know, when the show was over and I was still doing stuff, I did 90210. I did Boston public. I was, I did this movie called belly fruit. I, um, yeah. and then like a bunch of guest stars and different things. Um, but you know, it's listen, I mean, growing up as a child actor is tough, you know? And, um, I think that, uh, I was trying to figure out who I was as a Mm -hmm. human and as a woman. And unfortunately that just took me down, you know, some really kind of darker paths. And I, Mm -hmm. you know, I, um, you know, had a pretty big problem with drugs and alcohol for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of a cliche story. Like you hear about a lot of of actors, but it took me like a good 10 years to really um, kick it. Yeah. To go through that and get Mm -hmm. through all of that. And, so my 20s were really like mm-hmm. riddled with that struggle. And then when mm-hmm. I turned 30, I got sober, you know, for real got sober. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that it was even like a conscious decision to leave acting. I think that like addiction took me in a different direction, unfortunately. And I had to figure all of that out before I could, mm-hmm. you know, really make like a, a self-aware decision that I wanted to return to acting and what Mm -hmm. that was going to look like for me and you know it's a little late to the game I know I'm 39 Mm -hmm. now and yeah you know but I think that um fuck that who cares like none of that really matters right you know when's your your birthday October 4th wow I'll be 40 I'll be 40 see that's crazy the girl that I know that lives in Sherman Oaks literally just turned 40 like last week you know so she's a lot of us real close to your age yeah yeah that's funny yeah, but yeah. you know what? We're glad to see you're back at it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I can't I, wait. I'm so excited to hear that. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, your lips to God's ears. We'll see who, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm I have a great like job that I do. Yeah. You know, my career kind of took a very different direction. Yeah. Um, it couldn't be more different than acting. So, like, no matter what, I found a purpose and a life within that job you know yeah. so either way i'm always gonna be okay which is awesome but yeah. i think it's time i think you know i keep getting the calling that like you got and the itch. So, yeah and there's so many fans that are always like I, we can't wait to see you in something when are mm-hmm. you gonna do something blah 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 blah, blah. Mm-hmm. so yeah i'm just gonna just kind of see how it goes i have some other projects kind of in the works and Very um cool. yeah is that something you're going to promote when you like book something or are you going to wait until like, Oh drops? yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, yeah. Once I film it, I'll promote, you know? Yeah. 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 Just so not too early yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't you, do, you did something in like 2016 though. Didn't you? I was looking on your IMDb. There was like, a um, show or something. there's something on there. That's not mine. I don't know what that uh, is. And, but then I did like this little short film with Jody Sweeten, like yeah. around, yeah, around like 2018. Oh, I think cool. it was. Okay. Um, I don't think anything's ever going to happen with it, but it was kind mm. of like a p- dipping my foot in the water type of yeah. thing. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. So you just signed with a new agent, you said pretty recently? Well, it's, it's, I signed with an agent like three years ago. Um, okay. And nothing, there was no traction or whatever. And then I just decided to re sign mm. with them again mm-hmm. and kind of give it another shot. But I have a booking agent who is amazing. Oh, cool. His name is Lucas Ayers. And, 
he um, really takes care of my career, like the other side of it, which would be like yeah. public signings. Yeah. Yeah. Like autograph signings and yeah. conventions and um, even the stuff I do on like Jemmy and Cameo. I'm, I currently just, um, I can't, I'm, I can't like talk too, too much about it, but I currently yeah. just signed contracts. I'm writing a book about my life story. Oh, Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. So um, he's very involved in that. So he helps, he helps manage my, and also my social media. Cause I'm so bad at it. I have no idea why I don't even have that verification check. I like, I don't know uh, how to. It's if so you want that, I'm, I'm trying to do the same. Honestly, if you want that, you got to like go through an agent. I heard. Or I kind of like Yeah. It. So my agent's trying to get it. It's hard. It's like harder to get than you would think. It's which kind is of weird. bullshit. It yeah. Is. yeah. No, like I want to see that like five people have made fake accounts about you. I'm like, what the, how does that make sense? And <laughs> Wait, then is that, is that a thing? Cause I mean, that's easy. We could just do that. I right know now. that's like an easy thing <laughs> to do, but then they want like seven like published articles, which is fine. I have that too. I, we keep getting yeah. denied for some reason. So I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen this year. Yeah. It's going to happen soon for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have a book signing, if your book comes out, you should do it at that Grove Barnes and Noble. Yeah. That's like the it's best perfect. place to have any book signing. I would think. Yeah, that place is awesome. You're right. I met literally everybody there. I've met Drew Barrymore there. I've met wow. John Carpenter, like two wow. members of Blink-182. Yeah, it's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Always a good time. Yeah, even yeah. members of KISS like appeared there too. Wow, that's amazing. So you're on Cameo now? Yeah, I'm not very active on Cameo. I do more work on like work. It's not work, but on Jemmy, which is another platform. Jemmy. There's so many platforms now that, that come out where you can yeah. like, have those celebrity shout outs and stuff like that. But Jemmy's cool because you can do zooms. So my fans can like pay a certain amount of money for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or whatever it is. And I'll hop on a zoom with them mm -hmm. and then they can meet me like not in person, but yeah. virtually in person. Um, Cameo is actually doing that now too. Oh so mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm sure they're all going to do the same thing. Yeah. And then I can also sell some of my like, I don't have like a ton of merch per se, but I have yeah. those candles that I did that collaboration with. And then I have like Sorry. autograph, like pictures, like you can pick, there's one from shadow zone. There's one from this, there's one from that. You can like oh, pick cool. whatever and autograph it. I think you can pay extra. I'll do like a video when I'm signing it. I don't yeah. know. There's a bunch of shit on there that I do. So yeah. It's yeah. funny that they do that. Cause like some fans just won't believe that it's the right person. Signing. Yeah. So they want to pay that extra <laughs> 10 bucks for a video. Like, hello, it's really me. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah um are there any crazy movies or shows you've auditioned for that went on to be big successful productions i mean i mean so many yeah like ones ones that you didn't get though yeah interview with a vampire wow oh, eight mile no breaker um whatever it takes walk to remember i mean it goes on and on and on and on and on and on who are you gonna be in eight mile eminem's wife um that's the character that taryn manning played so oh, loosely based on Kim. Yeah. That's I know. Right. Bummer. Yes. Yeah, so there's so many. I mean, there's so freaking many. Is it hard to watch movies that you thought you were gonna get? Or not really? Sometimes, you sometimes, you know, because my life would have been like very, very different. Oh yeah. But then yeah. I have to remember that God put me like exactly where I'm supposed to be. Like I was not meant to play that role. I'm meant to like literally mm, that's how I feel. with you guys on a Sunday at eleven AM. I mean, that's just you know, you have to think about it like that or else you'll drive yourself crazy, you know? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So what was the most awkward audition you've ever had? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ever like something kind of weird? I think like probably the most awkward auditions I ever had were all commercial auditions. That's why I just won't do it anymore. Cause they want, they like want to, you know, make you like a trained monkey, you know, it's like dance, yeah. do this, do that. And I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do that. any of this shit. Yeah. It's yeah. so awkward and weird to me. Just be like, no, you dance like a monkey. Yeah, exactly. I'll film you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, have you kept any of your props or costumes over the years? You know, after every season of Alex Mack, the wardrobe department, so we were allowed to buy our wardrobe, like whatever we wanted. And then mm -hmm. for the other characters, like, let's say I wanted to buy something Larissa wore, like it was, we, every character got first pick of their own clothes. Very so cool. I would buy a lot of Robin's clothes, but I don't have anything. I don't yeah. have anything anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No shadow zone. Somebody else took nothing. That. <laughs> I have nothing. Uh Okay, so now we got like this little speed round thing that we kind of end on. Okay. 
So it's just a bunch of bullshit questions and you just kind of answer them. Let's do um, it. Favorite LA restaurant of all time? Ah, uh, um, favorite, favorite, probably Roscoe's. Oh, really? Chicken waffles? Yeah. I've yeah. had that. It's very good. Yeah. Favorite food? Anything Asian, Japanese, Chinese, anything. Sushi. Excellent. Chinese, yes. uh, ramen. Yeah. Dirty knees. Look at yeah. these. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, grape jelly or strawberry jelly? Neither, but if I had to pick strawberry. Really? Not a jelly girl. Not jelly. Be like peanut butter? It's some, not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Okay, your turn. Favorite band? Prince. It's yes. not a band, but Prince. Okay. Favorite genre of music? Um, rap and R&B. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Movies or TV shows? TV shows. Kind of had a feeling. Favorite movie? so many like of all time yeah <laughs> probably natural born killers yes Real? no no way yeah that's sure. hilarious then yeah <laughs> okay favorite favorite horror movie um favorite horror movie Shit. probably nightmare on elm street yes hell yeah excellent we actually yeah. have the guest uh, our next guest is actually mark Patton from nightmare on elm street too amazing march awesome. 7th yeah that's gonna be cool sure yeah yeah. Uh, favorite Alex Mack episode? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> yeah. I um, love. I personally love the one with the fountain. That's a really funny one. Fountain. I don't even know what is that. Like they like the mom like presents the fountain for like the company or whatever. Oh, okay. It's, it's I mean, hard to explain. I mean, I guess my favorite one would be um, it's one called the party where we throw a party okay. and like Robin's like staying with Alex for the week and they get in this really big fight. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The one I can remember best. Most embarrassing moment. So many. <laughs> whatever comes to your whatever comes to your mind. This interview. <laughs> yeah, this whole last hour. No, I'm just kidding. Um, most embarrassing moment. I don't know. I probably tripped and fell and was like, oh my god, or I I don't know. There's so many. Did you ever see that those videos that girl did, did where she like purposely trips and she's got like the bucket of popcorn? No. Oh my god! Gotta see that. Funniest shit in the world. Yeah. Uh, biggest regret. Um, I don't have any. Perfect. Yeah, I don't have any. Vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. Hell yeah. Hundred percent. Worst pickup line. (laughs) I mean, God, I get so many. I drive me nuts. Like, I don't even know how they get access to my. Cause you, you know, there's that secret folder on Facebook and like every so often I'll just like take a deep dive in there if I'm bored yeah. and just these guys are just disgusting with like, you know, ugh, there's, I, I can't even <laughs> think of a specific one. I've heard every cheesy pickup line in the book. Roses are red. So is your hair. This makes no sense. Refrigerator. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Perfect. You <laughs> <laughs> Favorite comedian. Ooh, good question. I know um, I was happy that was in this when you were talking. Yeah, about it. there's there's so many, but right now probably Theo Vaughn. Oh, he's funny as hell. I love that yeah. guy. His like accent's great too. Yeah. Favorite actress. Again, so many. Um, but I think of all time, uh, Drew Barrymore. Me too. Yeah. Literally, literally my yeah. favorite. Favorite um, color. Black, baby, like my soul. Same. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah. I'm blue. I love blue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go to city to visit. City? Yeah. I don't leave LA very often. No. That's <laughs> but funny. if I, I mean, either Houston or Atlanta, because I have family in both places. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. Houston's like the only part of Texas that I, I haven't been. It's, Is it cool? Yeah. 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 Go it's city. great. Um, okay. Favorite sport? Baseball. Baseball. Right on. Did you play any sports growing up? no 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 there's no time for that right yeah well my mom wouldn't let me she didn't want anything to happen to my face so (laughs) i wasn't really like allowed i wasn't allowed to do like normal kid stuff yeah oh man well you're you're coming back to acting might as well go to sports too yeah we'll see we'll see play play nfl or something yeah uh goals for 2021 Mm, get this book finished um get myself a little bit more out of debt I have a lot of freaking bills I'm trying to pay off. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, see how much more I can kind of like 
succeed in my professional career mm-hmm. as outside of acting. Yeah. See what happens with acting. I do a shit ton more photo shoots. So I have more content, maybe mm-hmm. figure out social media a little bit better so I can yeah. beef all of that up. I'm so bad at it. Um, just kind of expanding like my spiritual practices, um, deepening the relationships with the people in my life that mean the most to me. Um, and just like continue to be sober and be a good person and help people wherever I can. Excellent. Yeah. Can your fans find you. Where can they find me? Yeah. Like Instagram, Twitter. So um, I don't have a Twitter. I probably need to make one. I have <laughs> nah, Instagram. T- Twitter sucks. Yeah. Terrible. Twitter sucks, right? Don't make and Twitter. Don't, don't waste your time. With it. It. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to have a Twitter then. So <laughs> Instagram is just at Natanya Ross. And then yeah. my Facebook fan page is the same thing. Um, Natanya Ross. And then, yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, thank you so much for doing yeah. this with us. This was yeah. a freaking blast. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. It means a lot. Yeah, for uh, sure. We'll have to like go out to eat sometime or something. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. I'd love to meet you. We'd love I'd to meet you. Meet yeah. you both and we'll go hang out. And thank you for doing such incredible research on of all course. of my crazy shit that i've done in my yeah. acting career of course um, absolutely yeah you guys were very well researched and not yeah. most people are when i do these interviews so yeah, well, yeah of course i don't like yeah. the awkwardness that's why i gotta i gotta yeah make sure and i'm prepared you, you know killed it this was yeah. awesome thank you well, for you, having me well like sure. i said like i said alex mack was a huge part of my childhood my brother and i watched it a lot as yeah. kids so yeah. now to like to speak with someone from the show uh, finally so cool it, it, it's, yeah. it's awesome so thank oh, you for this sure. experience yeah for sure that means a lot to me to hear thank you for that and thank keep, you of course for- keep kicking ass and let I me will. know whenever anything happens send me i will for absolutely. sure absolutely be the first to know perfect thank <laughs> you so much all right Natanya. bye take bye. care take care natanya have a great day <laughs> you too all right bye